Welcome to our channel. Today, we delve into the dark and tumultuous life of Sam Giancana, a man whose name struck fear into the hearts of even the toughest gangsters in Chicago. Born into poverty, Sam rose to become the leader of the notorious Chicago outfit, a criminal empire built on manipulation, extortion, and ruthless eliminations. At the dawn of the 20th century, Chicago was a beacon of hope for many Italian immigrants fleeing extreme poverty and economic hardship in southern Italy. Among these hopeful souls were Antonio Giancana and Antonia de Simona, who left their hometown of Castelvetrano in Sicily for a chance at a better life. The promises of prosperity and opportunity in America were irresistible, despite the harsh realities they would face. Life in Sicily was far from idyllic. The local economy was crippled by falling agricultural prices and a devastating phylloxera outbreak that ravaged vineyards, leaving farmers and laborers struggling to survive. Antonio and Antonia, like many others, were driven by the lure of the American dream, hoping to escape the relentless cycle of poverty. Their journey across the Atlantic in the early 1900s marked the beginning of a new chapter, not just for them, but for their future son, Sam Giancana, born on May 24, 1908, in the rough neighborhood of Deepat, young Sam's early life was marred by hardship and loss. His mother died when he was just two years old, leaving him in the care of a harsh and unforgiving father. The seeds of Sam's rebellion were sown in his turbulent childhood, surrounded by the harsh realities of immigrant life and the lure of street gangs. This was the environment that shaped him pushing him towards a life of crime and eventually leading him to the violent and powerful world of the Chicago outfit. Stay tuned as we uncover the ruthless journey of Sam Giancana, his daring confrontations with the Kennedys, and his shadowy connections with the CIA. This is a story of power, crime, and the relentless pursuit of dominance in the underworld of Chicago. The collapse of agricultural prices and the phylloxera outbreak that devastated vineyards left small landowners and laborers without means to sustain themselves. The American dream gleamed as a beacon of hope amidst the shadows. Promises of opportunity, prosperity, and freedom were irresistible. Thus, young men from Sicily and all over Italy, inspired by success stories, embarked on the perilous transatlantic journey. They sought refuge in Italian, American communities in cities like New York, Chicago, and New Orleans, hoping to build a new life in a land that offered much but guaranteed nothing. Antonio made the journey across the Atlantic in 1905, followed by his wife a year later. In this new world of opportunities and challenges, their son, later known as Sam Giancana, was born on May 24, 1908, in the tough neighborhood of DePete. Sam's early years were fraught with hardship. Tragedy struck when his mother died in 1910, leaving the two-year-old in the care of his stern father, who later remarried married Mary Leonardo D. Antonio was extremely strict with his children. For instance, when young Sam misbehaved, his father would punish him by chaining him with a razor strap. Growing up in a tumultuous environment, Sam Giancana had a strained relationship with his father and lacked any positive role models. His challenging childhood, surrounded by seven siblings and the harsh realities of immigrant life, inevitably pushed him toward a life of crime. The Italian-American community in Chicago was vibrant, but also entangled in organized crime. The Italian-American mafia, known as the Chicago Outfit, was gaining power fueled by street gangs and the extortion operations of the Black Hand. Big Jim Colosimo, a prominent figure in organized crime, built his empire until his nephew Johnny Torrio and an ambitious Al Capone took over. Later, leaders like Frank Nitti, Paul Ricca, and Tony Accardo would continue to shape the outfit. Sam Giancana's tough character was forged in this environment. Expelled from school at the age of 10, he was sent to a juvenile detention center, which served more as a school for crime than a place of reform. 
As a teenager, Giancana joined the Notorious 42 Gang, a group of young men involved in various criminal activities, including car thefts, burglaries, and murders. During Prohibition, the gang became integral to the operations of established mobsters like Capone, providing necessary resources for smuggling. This gang was not just a phase of youthful rebellion for Giancana. It was his formal introduction to the world of organized crime in Chicago, where he learned the rules and made the connections that would propel him to infamy. On the near west side of Chicago, Sam Giancana learned the harsh realities of organized crime. Every theft and murder enriched his criminal education, preparing him for a life dominated by violence and power. His gang, the 42 Gang, became known for their calculated brutality, often clashing with rival groups in bloody confrontations. Their frequent indulgence in murder led to high arrest rates, whether they were targeting robbery victims, suspected informants, or, on particularly bad days, police officers. Joseph Diamond Joe Esposito, a savvy political figure in Chicago, took the gang under his wing, providing them with protection and support, which helped him expand his criminal influence. Sam's first brush with the law came in 1925, when he was arrested for car theft but quickly released. By his early 20s, by his early 20s, he was already involved in three murder investigations, although he was never convicted. The turning point came on March 21, 1928, when Esposito was assassinated outside his home in a drive by shooting. His two nieces inside the house were unaware of the violent end that befell their uncle. This event marked a significant moment in Giancana's rise within the criminal world, solidifying his reputation and paving the way for his future as a notorious gangster. Joseph Esposito was ambushed and killed by assailants in a drive, by shooting, but no one was ever charged for his murder. His involvement in criminal activities and alcohol trafficking during Prohibition made him a target for many, including rival gangsters like Al Capone, who sought to eliminate threats to their power. There is a theory that Sam Giancana played a significant role in Esposito's assassination to gain favor with the Chicago outfit. This theory is plausible as Esposito's death enabled the 42 gang to become an integral part of the Chicago outfit under leaders like Frank Nitti, Paul Ricca, and Tony Accardo. Esposito's funeral was a grand event attended by many crime associates. In 1929, Giancana's criminal career took a turn when he was convicted of robbery and theft, resulting in a prison sentence at Joliet Correctional Center. After serving nearly four years, he was released in 1932 and officially joined the Chicago outfit, becoming the first member of the 42 gang to do so. Sam Giancana quickly became a key player in the Chicago outfit, leveraging his connections and ruthless tactics to expand the organization's control over profitable illegal enterprises. In September 1933, he briefly stepped away from his criminal activities to marry Angeline de Tolve, the daughter of Italian immigrants from Basilicata. Together, they had three daughters. Antoinette, born in 1935, Bonnie in 1938, and Francine in 1938, and Francine in 1945. Despite his growing family, Giancana's legal troubles persisted. In 1939, he was convicted of bootlegging and sentenced to four years in Leavenworth Prison. This incarceration was merely a temporary setback. Upon his release in 1942, he quickly reasserted his influence within the outfit. Giancana convinced Tony Accardo, then the underboss, to seize control of the highly profitable African-American numbers racket in Chicago, solidifying his pivotal role in the organization. The numbers racket was an illegal betting system where participants wagered on three-digit numbers, often derived from the final digits of daily racetrack bets. Local collectors known as runners would gather these bets and deliver them to central operations, creating a steady stream of illicit revenue for the mafia. This form of gambling became particularly popular in African-American neighborhoods, 
significantly boosting the Chicago outfit's profits and reinforcing Sam Giancana's authority within the organization. The allure of this lucrative operation was undeniable for the outfit's leaders. Notably, Tony Accardo and Paul Ricca were in attendance when Giancana proudly showcased the counting room for the numbers racket. The sight of piles of cash amassed from this operation was a testament to its profitability and a visual feast for those driven by greed. The Chicago outfit exerted its influence to convince Eddie Jones, a leading figure in the African-American gambling scene on the South Side, to exit the business and leave town. However, Theodore Teddy Rowe, another key player, adamantly refused to relinquish control of his operation. Rowe's journey began modestly as an errand boy in Arkansas, but his fortunes changed dramatically when he moved to Chicago. Under Eddie Jones's guidance, Rowe became a lottery ticket seller, with political heavyweights Edward Kelly and Patrick Nash providing protection for his operations. The partnership between Rowe and Jones thrived, generating an incredible $100,000 daily. When Jones fled to Mexico in 1938 to escape the outfit's extortion demands, Rowe took over and expanded the business into a multi-million dollar empire. The tension reached a boiling point when Rowe killed Leonard Fatlini Cayano, a trusted member of Sam Giancana's crew, in 1951. Cayano was more than just a bodyguard. He was a symbol of strength and loyalty for Giancana. Having known each other since their youth, Giancana and Cayano shared a bond forged in their early criminal exploits. Cayano played a pivotal role in taking over the profitable African-American lottery operations in Chicago, making him indispensable to Giancana. His calm demeanor and imposing presence earned Giancana's respect and trust. The loss of Cayano was a significant blow to Giancana, and the repercussions were severe. In August 1952, Roe met a violent end at the hands of masked assassins, sending a clear message about who truly controlled Chicago's gambling scene. Despite his notorious reputation, Roe's funeral was a grand affair, with his coffin adorned with floral tributes. On April 23, 1954, Sam Giancana's life took a dramatic turn when his wife passed away, leaving him a widower and single father. Despite the loss, Giancana quickly immersed himself in a string of high-profile romantic relationships, most notably with singer Phyllis McGeer in the 1960s. Known for his generosity, Giancana lavished McGuire with expensive gifts, including jewelry and furs. Rumors also linked him to Judith Campbell Exner and possibly Marilyn Monroe. Giancana's brutal efficiency in expanding the Chicago outfit's criminal ventures did not go unnoticed. His knack for handling illicit operations and his ruthless nature secured him a prominent position in the world of organized crime. In 1957, Tony Accardo, then the outfit's boss, decided to step down and appointed Giancana as his successor. This transition was smoothed by Giancana's close ties with Accardo and underboss Paul Ricca, who had also been coaxed into taking over the African-American gambling operations. Giancana's ascent to power was driven not just by his connections, but also by his fearsome reputation. Known for his extreme violence and ability to corrupt law enforcement, Giancana maintained significant control within the outfit. Although Accardo and Ricca partially retired, they continued to wield considerable influence behind the scenes, ensuring Giancana consulted them on major decisions. Control over the lucrative numbers, Racket solidified Giancana's leadership, strengthening the outfit's dominance in Chicago's criminal and political spheres, marking an era of significant expansion and consolidation for organized crime. Sam Giancana was known for his connections within the police force, often bragging about having several police chiefs on his payroll. This, he claimed, made Chicago a haven for the outfit's activities, operating with near total impunity. In fact, he was so confident in his control over the city that he suggested holding a major mafia meeting there, insisting Chicago was securely under his command. Giancana's luxurious lifestyle 
also set him apart. His wealth allowed him to mingle with high-profile figures in entertainment and politics, enhancing his notoriety. He frequented the most exclusive clubs, often seen with celebrities and politicians, which gave him an air of untouchability and glamour rare in the underworld. However, his rise to power was fraught with internal conflicts and territorial wars. Faced numerous rivals within and outside his organization, but he managed to overcome them all. In the same year, he attended the infamous Mafia meeting in Appalachian, New York, organized by Capo Joseph Barbara. This gathering included around 100 mobsters from the United States, Italy, and Cuba, who discussed loan sharking, drug trafficking, gambling, and the division of operations previously controlled by the assassinated Albert Anastasia. Giancana's efficiency in expanding the outfit's criminal enterprises earned him respect and fear among his peers. Although many details of his role at the meeting remain unknown, his invitation alone confirmed his status as a top capo in the United States. The New York State Police raided the event, arresting many prominent mobsters, but Giancana was one of the few who managed to escape unscathed. It is often speculated that Sam Giancana played a significant role in John F. Kennedy's narrow victory in the 1960 presidential election. Giancana had connections with Joseph Kennedy, the former ambassador to Great Britain and patriarch of the Kennedy family, who was deeply involved in maneuvering his son's political career. Various theories suggest that Giancana's influence helped secure key votes. In Chicago, under the tight control of Mayor Richard Daley, vote manipulation in Cook County was allegedly orchestrated by Giancana, tipping the scales in Kennedy's favor in Illinois. Additionally, it's claimed that Giancana's network influenced the West Virginia primaries, ensuring Kennedy's victory over Hubert Humphrey through local political pressure. An alleged agreement between Joseph Kennedy and Sam Giancana purportedly promised non-interference in mafia activities in exchange for Giancana's assistance in securing Kennedy's electoral success. However, the relationship between the Kennedys and Giancana was complex and fraught with mutual interests and hidden conflicts. Upon assuming the presidency, John F., Kennedy appointed his brother Robert as Attorney General, who aggressively pursued organized crime, creating tension with figures like Giancana. In a plot straight out of a spy novel, the CIA collaborated with Giancana to eliminate Fidel Castro, using intermediary Robert Mahu to broker the deal. Giancana accepted the mission, not out, out of patriotism, but with hopes of reclaiming properties confiscated by Castro for the Chicago outfit. These covert operations, shrouded in secrecy, were only revealed years later through investigations. In 1961, the FBI intercepted Giancana's motel room in Phoenix, where he was with his lover, Phyllis McGuire. Despite being interrogated, McGuire maintained her silence. Another dark theory involves Marilyn Monroe's death, suggesting Giancana pressured her to keep quiet about her relationships with the Kennedys. Some believe that both Giancana and the Kennedys might have had motives to cover up her death to protect their reputations and national security implications. While these theories abound, they remain speculative, adding layers of intrigue to the already complex narrative of Sam Giancana's life and his entanglements with the Kennedys. The famous actress had romantic ties with President John Kennedy and his brother, Robert Kennedy. It is alleged that the mobster tried to convince her to keep her relationships with the Kennedys a secret. Some even speculate that the mobster and the Kennedy brothers may have been involved in covering up her death to protect their reputations and national security. However, the connections between the Chicago gangster and the Kennedys don't end there. The assassination of President Kennedy on November 22, 1963, sparked numerous conspiracy theories. While riding in a limousine in Dallas, Kennedy was fatally shot and he was declared dead around 1 p.m. Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested for the crime, but soon after, Jack Ruby, 
a small-time criminal with mafia connections, killed Oswald during a police transfer. The Warren Commission concluded that Oswald acted alone, but theories of a second shooter continue to circulate. One prominent theory implicates Sam Giancana, who allegedly held a grudge against the Kennedys for not fulfilling promises made in exchange for helping Kennedy secure votes in Illinois during the 1960 election. In 1965, Giancana's downfall began. He was called before a grand jury, but chose to remain silent, even with granted immunity, leading to his imprisonment for contempt. While incarcerated, his former allies took advantage of his absence to remove him from power. After his release, Giancana fled to Mexico, but was eventually deported back to the United States in 1974. Summoned to testify before the Senate Intelligence Committee about his involvement in CIA plots to assassinate Fidel Castro, Giancana never made it to Washington. On June 19, 1919-1975, he was murdered in his home while preparing dinner. The killer was never identified, leaving the mystery of his death unsolved. On June 19, 1975, less than a year after his return to the country, Sam Giancana was preparing dinner at his house in Oak Park when someone decided it was the perfect moment to eliminate him. Giancana was shot several times, including once in the back of the head, and was killed at the age of 67 around 11 p.m. Joseph Diperzio, the person in charge of taking care of Giancana, found his body collapsed on the basement kitchen floor. The feared mobster who had managed millions ended his days slain next to a frying pan and some humble ingredients. His killer has never been identified, although the list of suspects is truly long. If you found Sam Giancana's story interesting, you shouldn't miss the infamous life of his great saint trafficker, Jr., the man who was exiled by Fidel Castro from Havana. You can watch the video right now on the screen. Don't forget to subscribe, like, push the bell icon, and share. Stay tuned for more intriguing stories.